What up HyperChange, welcome to another episode. Today I'm taking a user generated company, doing a little bit of analysis on it. The ticker is CCGID. They're in the middle of a reverse split, rebranding, changing the name from Car Charging Group to Blink Charging. I love getting the requests, keep sending me ideas for new episodes, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna be brutally honest if you give me a company to review and I took a look at Car Charging Group. This is one of the worst company. I usually try and tell you guys about companies that I like that are promising either in technology, products, or vision. This company's got nothing. Here's why. First thing, I don't understand this company's business model. Blink Charging or Car Charging Group, their entire thing is we're going to set up these electric charging stations and allow people to charge their electric cars. I don't think they've thought through the rationale of an EV owner. When you, Most people who have electric cars have charging at their house and usually that's way more than enough for daily use. The only reason you need a third party charger is if you're going somewhere that's out of range. This is exactly why Tesla built their massive supercharger network, which allows you to go anywhere in the country, all on their proprietary fast charging technology, because they know the biggest pain point for electric cars is when you want to take a long trip and charge. But Blink, I don't. where do they fit into this? I'm in Seattle right now. I went and looked at where the, all their chargers are. They're all in the heart of Seattle. If you look at this map, they're either in the heart of Bellevue or the heart of Seattle. It looks like they're geographically centering their charging stations in the middle of cities, which makes no sense to me because if you're already in a city, you probably are already charging your car at home. The only reason you'd want to charge your car on a third party charger is when you're going somewhere far away from a city. I don't get their geographic strategy. This is interesting to note because you think about this company you're saying, oh, they charge electric cars. This is a growth industry. Electric car sales are going to boom and everyone's going to need to charge them somewhere. That rationale makes sense to me on a very basic level, but does that mean this business is going to succeed? No. And that's why I think this is an awesome episode, an example to talk about why even a company in such a great industry as electric vehicles may be a total flop. Just because they're in a good industry doesn't mean you're a good business. My guess is that they're way overestimating the demand for these. In reality, Reality, almost no one's gonna use these third-party chargers because they're super slow you already have charging at home and if you're long distance you're probably in a Tesla and you're gonna supercharge they haven't thought through the actual reason why people would want to charge their electric vehicles and where so it just makes no sense and off the bat I feel like this company has no vision tell me why I'm wrong anyway before we even get into the financials they're doing a reverse split a 1 to 50 reverse split this means if you had 50 shares now you have one why are they doing this? Because their stock price fell so low that it was a penny stock and they needed to get the share price back up to a certain level to be able to apply for a NASDAQ listing. First of all, that's a huge red flag. Any company that's reverse splitting on a one to 50 level, not every time a reverse split is bad, but usually a reverse split means the business model's broken, it's a penny stock, their only prayer for keeping the company alive and raising funding is doing a reverse split, tightening up the share count and setting up to sell a bunch more stock. And if you look at the company, they only have about 1.64 million shares outstanding right now, which is super low and almost too low to even be able to list on the NASDAQ. So they're almost already implying that they're going to sell a ton more stock and dilute a ton more shareholders just by the fact that their share count is so small. And if you dig it in their financials, it's a no brainer. Of course, these guys, guys need to raise capital. They raised a ton of money in like 2013, have been burning through it and piling on debt ever since. If you take a look at their most recent quarterly report, these guys have a solid, yep, you guessed it, $584 in cash. Hyper changed viewers. You guys probably have more cash than this car charging company does. And these guys have like 10 million or 20 million of debt and liabilities. Man, this is probably the worst balance sheet I could think of looking at in recent memory. Anyway, let, let's get into the, the business. What did they do in 2016? They did 3.3 million in revenue, down from 4 million the year before, so their revenue is declining. Down a solid 16% in 2016. Remember, the electric car market is exploding. Electric vehicles as a trend continue to rise. The utilization of these vehicles and demand for charging should be incredibly on the rise, but their revenue is declining. This is a huge red flag. One potential explanation is that their expenses are going down, so they're firing a ton of people and downsizing, but that doesn't look good either. This is a company that had 3.3 million in revenue in 2016. Their loss from operations was 7.2 million. Million. That's worth. That's a negative 200% operating margin. That is awful. Their gross profit was only 500,000, but they have 7.7 .7 million in expenses. Their gross profit would need to go up 16 times while keeping their expenses flat for this company to get to break even. Not for you to make money. They will never produce a profit. I'm sorry. That's what, what I think. So that was 2016. And then if you go to 2017, it's like okay, maybe that was a bad year. They're bouncing back. They're gonna get. You know, they're gonna grow again. No, revenue is down from. 868,000 in Q2 2016 to 532,000 in Q2 2017. The loss from operations grew, so revenues down, loss is up. This is a company that is what I would call in a massive downward spiral. 
they burned through all their cash. They piled on probably as much debt as they can have. If you look at their debt, as of Q2, at least three million in debt just from co convertible notes. And if you include accounts payable, then they have another 13 or 14 million of liabilities. So this company has like 16 or 17 million worth of debt and liabilities with $584 worth of cash. That is the most precarious situation I've almost, I can fathom for a company to be in hundreds more times debt than cash. And they're not making money, they're losing money. My guess is they're gonna need to dilute shareholders an absurd amount just to keep the company afloat. It's just gonna kick the can on the road on the inevitable, which is these guys are going bankrupt. Maybe they had a good intention. They were like, we're gonna build out the infrastructure to let people charge our electric cars. It's going to be great. We're going to make a huge business out of it. Then Tesla announced the supercharger and they realized that everyone was either charging at home or needed to charge on a road trip. Their entire infrastructure and asset base of these city plug-in chargers is useless, is losing money. That's where they're at now and they're trying to keep the company afloat desperately. But I would never invest in this thing. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot full put foot pole. I don't know what to say at this point. This is not a way to play the electric vehicle industry. That's hyper change. Keep the ideas flowing. I love this suggestion. I'm not going to love every company, you know, and I'm keeping it real with you guys. Pilgrim Proust, let me know. Hopefully you watch this video and hopefully you're not, I didn't hurt your feelings or anything. Peace out. See you guys next time. Sorry, forgot one more thing. To wrap up the company's valuation, if we assume this reverse one for 50 reverse split with about 82 million shares outstanding, quick calculation, that means they will have about 1.64 million shares outstanding. Today, when I just pulled up a quote of the company, they're trading at 16.30 per share. That puts their current market cap at about $27 million. So this is a company trading for $27 million, which has about 20 million in liabilities, $500 in cash, a business that is doing about $3 million a year and declining, and that business is losing about $8 million a year. There's no earnings to speak of. They're trading at a price sales multiple of nine times price sales. That's higher than Netflix. That's higher than Salesforce. That's higher than Tesla. But those are all incredible businesses. That's higher than Amazon. That's higher than Google. That's in line with Facebook and they're declining. The valuation makes no sense on a fundamental level. And if you add in the fact that this company is on the cusp of, in my opinion, doing an incredible round of mega dilution to support their funding needs, then this is gonna get even more expensive. I just think there's no way to even rationally make the valuation make sense. I would love for someone in the comments to tell me why I'm wrong. If you can prove to me, I, I'm waiting for someone to convince me that this is a good company, but I've lost all hope. $27 million for a company that's losing $8 million a year. I wouldn't buy that. They have $500 in cash. My little sister has more than $500 in cash. This company's garbage, that's my opinion. Sorry, Car Charging Group, you're doing a great job, but your business model sucks, that's not my fault. Anyway, that's Hyper Change, I'll see you guys next time.